Hi everybody, Todd at 51% crew. Uh, welcome back to part two of our Fibonacci series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain the levels of Fibonacci and give you some examples of how they are used. Um, so what Fibonacci is, is we're going to go over here to Investopedia and it's a mathematical sequence. Some of you might remember uh, learning this in high school. And it's applied to our charting. So what the sequence is and how it follows is it starts at zero and then you take the second number as one and then you add the one. And if you add one and one, you get two. If you add two and one, now you get three. So now you add three and two, you get five, five and three, you get eight, and so on. Um, like it says here, each number is approximately 1.618 times greater than the preceding number. The figure is 1.618, and it's called the golden ratio. The inverse of 1.618 is the 618. So, then you divide all these and do all this math, but I don't want to overwhelm you to make you think that you have to learn all this math and do all this stuff in your head as we're trading. That's the conception some people get and they make it a lot more difficult on themselves than it really is. So I just wanted to give you an explanation of what it is, how you got these numbers, but now I kind of want to erase that from your head if that makes sense. <laughs> So um, what it is is we're laying fibs, and if you watched the other video, I showed you how to lay a fib. Here was the very first fib I laid on this chart. So um, here are our ratios. It is a 0, a 23.6, which is represented at 0.236, which is technically 23.6%, a 38.2, a 50, a 618, a 786 and it goes all the way to a hundred percent retracement that would mean that this made this market made a move all the way up and it came all the way back down to 100 percent of your original move so um there's a couple how do i say this principles behind this maybe um you know rules i, I guess you would call them and a lot of traders win off of the 50 and live off the 50. Most traders prefer the 618 because that gives you a greater risk and greater reward to risk ratio and a larger profit because large moves, large profit, small moves, small profit. This is also a good place to have your stop. They say in a market that if a candle closes below the 618, then the trend is invalidated. It is no longer a trend at that point. They say that the institutions took too much profit and we need to form a new trend. I find that mm, re relatively a fair statement, but like I said, numerous of my previous videos, we have to adapt, and this is crypto, a very, very fast-paced moving market. So sometimes you have to adjust and think of that at the 786, but obviously that is, you know, I guess the golden rule they call it, um, if that makes sense. So. The best trades are generally off the 618 and the 786. Some of your more aggressive traders trade off of the 50 and lay a stop below the 618. But in this type of violent market, then, you know, we're really uh, getting into some losses there. So let's look at this trend. We drew this on the last video. We see, let's just pretend um, we don't have any of this history because we don't know none of this. The market's coming down. All right, we had a nice, great bull run all the way up. The market took a heavy correction. Uh, you're looking to get into this market. So where do you want to do that at? You want to possibly enter this market. You know, you don't want to get in at the 23.6 because that's going to be uh, your risk to reward ratio is really high. Um, so generally, 
a lot of traders uh, were in the excitement of this big, huge bull run. So they jumped the gun here at the 50%. So you have to take in mind other market conditions and pair this with other indicators. But let's just solely focus on Fibonacci to um, build up your education here. So you can see that this market came down here and hit the 50 and punched through it. So you would want to trade off of this 50 or the 618. Um, a lot of traders will also put a partial position in and a full position here with their stop below the 618 down here because that would invalidate the trend. So let's just say uh, hypothetically that you said, okay, I drew this, I took the retracement, I entered the market at the 50 and it bounced on me. Now you're in a position of, we need to figure out where this market's going because I'm long and I need to get out of my trade obviously and take profits eventually. So at this point in the market, what we're gonna do is we're going to say, okay, well, let's take this, let's, uh, let's pull our lines back and we're gonna go with, actually, let's just get rid of this. I don't know. Make it more clear for you. Um, let's go ahead and say that we're at this point in the market. We took a position at the 50 and it retraced. Now, where do we want to get out of the market? We're going to drop it. So drag with the trend because we're pretending we don't have this history here. We entered at the 50 and we're going to go ahead and let's extend our lines over. Now we've seen the bounce. Everybody knows the bounce. Where did the bounce go to? The 618. Magic. I don't think so. That's when the institutions, there are several reasons for this. Um, some people got caught in this and they wanted to sell the bounce, so they got out because they knew the trend was um, going to head back down because that was a lot of momentum coming back down. I mean, you got to figure 10,000, it went down you know, 50% in value. So this, this got chopped in half from 20,000 to 10,000. They took the trade and now you exited your position at roughly 16.4. That's a $6,000 profit. And blatantly obvious tax at this position at the 618 bounce. So now we're trading off of that. That's a perfect example of when to enter the market and when to exit the market. Because keep in mind, that these are fast paced. Yes, they are, uh, you know, the best trades are off the 618 and the 50 generally. I don't even fool with the other ones too much because um, they're invalidating the trends. Uh, <clears throat> let's find another example. Say we got into a position on this bull run. Look at this perfect 38.2, 38.2, okay? That's a level, but if you wanted to actually trade this, you wanted to be in on a tighter time frame. So I'm gonna show you something. Let's drop this down. This is the actual trend. This was your downtrend, this was your bottom, and now you're trading in a long position. Where do you take your profits? You're either gonna take your profits at the 50 or the 618, depending on other indicators. So look how this market recovered to the 50, to the 50. This is helping you identify support and resistance at this point. So um, this trend could have very easily continued up, but you would have to invalidate or validate this position, obviously, with, through other indicators. But I'm trying to give you some examples of how to identify your support levels and your resistance levels, because overall, that is what Fibonacci is used for. Where uh, in the market can you expect the buyers and the sellers to step in? And they're very clear. So it's it's blatantly obvious at this 50 that we were gonna sell because look at this resistance here. So we knew when the market reached this level again, we could have got resistance. So you could have entered this trade anywhere in this zone once it bounced and knew to get out of your position at this 50 because of this. So that's an example of how to use Fibonacci. And we need to get into your head these key levels again. Um, the ideal Fibonacci retracement is a 618 as far as risk to reward ratio. 
And like I said, a lot of traders only trade off of the 50 and they're more aggressive. But they say that if you break through the 618, that institutions took too much profits and the trend is no longer valid and you need to look for another trend. Um, uh, you could argue that because like I said, um, I'd probably stick with that for a new trader, but trading off the 786 in crypto is very common because of the fast paced violence of the market. So these are some examples of the levels of Fibonacci and how they're applied to a chart. Um, looks like I'm coming up on my 12 minute mark. So I'm gonna end this video and let you let this sink into you what I've said here and we'll continue this series. So like I said, keep watching. I'll keep building up this series, giving you little tips and secrets and you know how to make yourself a better trader. Hopefully this helps. Um, if you want, come support me on Patreon. Uh, I'll have a little bit more one-on-one uh, -on -one and more exclusive content in there for people willing to learn. And uh, hey, yeah, let's wrap this up. Catch you on the next video.